I'm Leslie, and this is Shannon, and we're back for another episode of Try This. Today, we're building for birds, bees, and butterflies. Try This is a series where we take a section of the Oxford County Library collection and try something new. Today, we're going to discover how to make our green spaces more pollinator friendly. So how to attract birds, bees, and butterflies and keep them coming around. So pollinators are a really important part of our environment and we're going to work on how to help them out. So this book here, Attracting Native Pollinators, talks about how to attract bees, birds, and butterflies and all other critters like moths and flies and beetles may be pests, but they are important to the ecosystem. And this book talks about how you can help them and sort of keep them where you want them to stay, outside in your garden. So this book has all the information for our insect friends and how to create gardens for them. But birds are also very important too. Shannon, do you know any ways to attract birds? Actually, great question. We're going to talk about some tips on how to attract birds to your backyard feeders and how to keep them coming back. So let's start off with birds and we're going to show you how to make a simple bird feeder. When we began looking for books about birds in the Oxford County Library collection, we didn't know exactly how many results we would get. So there is so many books in our collection about birds and bird guides and backyard feeders. So we have a small sample of them here to show you. So this book over here, Birds in Your Backyard, a bird's lover's guide to creating a garden sanctuary. So this is a great book, has tons of information about gardens and everything, but the thing that I thought was awesome is that at the very back, there is a field guide to backyard birds. So in there is, gives you a list of different types of birds that you can find in your backyard. So if you have a bird in your backyard and you're like, what kind of bird is that? Fantastic book. It also has uh, hummingbirds, butterflies, and in the very back, it has a guide of what types of flowers will attract the birds as well. So there's all That'd be a really great book to take out if you were just starting to plan for a garden or how you wanted to change up your landscaping. It seems to have a little bit of everything in it. Absolutely. A little bit of bird guides, some feeder tips, how to plan your garden and what sort of plants you should actually buy to attract certain animals. We have other bird guides specifically. There's the North American Bird Feeder Guide, so what types of seeds and food to put out for specific types of birds. And there are lots of practical books about attracting birds and how to feed them, but there's a lot of really fun books too. And I wanted to show you this one. It's called The Wild and Wacky Bird Houses and Feeders. So instantly the pictures in this book are super fun and they show different types of bird feeders and bird houses, but really cool. They include the patterns and the measurements as well. So if you wanted to make this whimsical birdhouse as it's called, there is the patterns and how to actually go about making it. There are really creative houses in here. So this one's a beaver birdhouse. Super cute. That's hilarious. Yeah, and it tells you how to do it, the different parts, how much wood is required, and then the blueprint of how it actually goes together. One way that you can attract birds to your yard is providing shelter. So shelter is crucial and the birds can tell if they are not safe in an environment. So having multiple sizes of houses and different options will attract different varieties of birds. So if building a birdhouse isn't an option for you, there are alternatives to actual birdhouses. You could provide the nesting materials that birds would need to make themselves a safe space. So things like twigs and sticks and string and even pet fur you could leave out in a small container that's open that they're able to get in there and get it and go and build themselves a nest. So like all animals, birds are looking for the necessities for life to find a safe environment. So they're looking for shelter, they're looking for nesting materials, and they're looking for water as well. So moving water is a great option, so like a fountain or something in your yard if you have a pond, but that may not be an option for you. We have a standing bird bath at our house, uh, so the water's not moving in it, so once a week or so we'll go and we'll take the hose and clean it out because it does start to turn a bit green with algae, so we just make sure that water is fresh. And as we know, standing water is a big attraction for mosquitoes and we don't want to have standing stagnant water in your yard and birds don't want dirty still water either. Exactly. 
So we've talked about bird shelters and water. The next necessity they need is food. They are looking for a feeding source. So that is going to bring us to bird feeders and we're going to show you a very simple bird feeder that you can make with very minimal materials. So we're all familiar with traditional bird feeders, ones that you would get at like a home center or something and you buy your loose bird seed and you put it in the feeder and you hang it on a hook and then the birds can fly and eat. But today we're going to try a DIY bird feeder <laughs> with some very simple ingredients and materials. So we have giant pine cones. These are actually pine cones from a Christmas decoration, but regular pine cones would be great as well. We have some peanut butter and some loose mixed bird seed. So all you do for this is you spread some peanut butter onto your pine cone so the seeds have enough to stick to it, and then you put it out somewhere in your yard. So location of bird feeders is important. Some birds like to eat off of the ground. Some like to be able to swoop in and won't necessarily eat at feeders that are maybe hanging tucked up in trees or too close to buildings. So this is a nice alternative. If you had something like a steak like that, you could just put it in the ground, but just hanging a pine cone would, be, would work too. So with your regular feeders though, you definitely want to make sure that you squirrel proof them or the squirrels are going to eat all of the food and your birds will get nothing because squirrels get quite hungry. I have plenty in my backyard that eat up all the food. So a few things you can do is put some wire mesh around your feeder. Um, on the feeders that you have that are actually on the ground, I have heard, funny, but if you take a slinky and attach it to the top, then when the squirrel goes to jump up, it can't get there. I haven't tried it, but if anyone has, let us know. It's a creative idea. It would idea. be a cool thing. Another way you could deter squirrels from eating all your bird seed out of your feeder is having a separate squirrel feeder. Providing squirrels a different food source might entice them to eat from their feeder and leave the bird feeder alone. So squirrels would probably love this treat. It's simple, delicious, so you may have to make quite a few so that everybody gets some. All right, let's do it. one small section of our giant pine cone, but you could easily do the whole thing and roll it in your bird seed to make a tasty treat for some backyard friends. So this would be a great project to do with kids, um, providing they don't have a nut allergy, but if they do, you could definitely use a different type of nut-free butter. Instead of like a peanut butter, you could substitute for a nut-free butter, a different type of butter, or lard. Lard is what um, makes up suet and makes the suet cakes. So you can make your own suet cakes using like beef fat mixed in with bird seed and then you freeze it and put it out. Providing a variety of different food sources, so a combination of suet and loose bird seed, maybe some fruit slices, will attract a variety of types of birds and hopefully keep them coming back. So even though we made a seed feeder, there are types of birds that wouldn't be attracted to this. Do you know what bird that is, Shannon? I'm thinking a hummingbird. So you may be familiar with hummingbirds that they drink out of those red feeders and they drink nectar. So that's where a variety of food sources is important. So if you have a hummingbird feeder with sugar water in it, it will attract hummingbirds as well as having seed feeders to attract other types of birds. So rather than buying the red nectar, it is a safer and more cost efficient option to make your own sugar water from home. So you can make hummingbird nectar sugar water with a recipe that is one to four ratio. So one cup of just table sugar dissolved into four cups of hot water. You don't necessarily have to boil the water, but if you, but boiling water removes more impurities and it really makes sure that that sugar is dissolved. So as long as the sugar dissolves in the hot water, you're good to go. So make sure you clean your bird feeders regularly because like you wouldn't want to eat off a dirty plate, they don't want to eat out of a dirty feeder. And that goes with seed feeders as well. So if you're not getting a lot of traction or you've had lots of rainy weather, you might need to shake them out and add fresh seeds so they don't get moldy. So now that our birds are housed and fed, let's move on to bees. So bees. A lot of people will see bees as pests or a nuisance, but bees are so, so very important to our ecosystem. There are an estimated 4,000 different species of bees in North America and several of their populations are at risk. So we are going to build a bee house 
which is one way we can provide shelter and help to try and increase these bee populations to protect them. So to make a bee house or a hotel, you will need some form of container. We have several different options here and cylinders. So bees love to live in a cylinder. So any sort of like, like the inside roll of something, these are the inside rolls of um, receipt paper. Uh, there are rolling coins over here, or you could just roll up just some paper. Or if you have the big paper straws, that would work too. Some species of bees are social and they live in hives or colonies, they live as a group. And then you have some species of bees that are solitary, so they live alone. So your bee house or hotel functions just like that. You might have some that live alone and are just individuals, or some that come and live as a group. So to begin, you need to pick a container. So we have two different sizes of coffee cans. This is a bottom of a two liter pot bottle and a strawberry basket. So whatever your container is, is to hold the cylinders. So the size of the container doesn't really matter. It just depends on how big of a hotel that you're making for your bees. So I'm going to use this small coffee can and I'm going to use this strawberry basket. Now the strawberry basket does have holes in it, so it's great, but you need to put it somewhere where it's going to be protected from the elements so that there's no water getting inside of it. A DIY bee house is really simple. So all you need to do is put your cylinders into the container. That's about it. You can glue them into place or pack them tightly enough that they're not going to move around. There you have a DIY bee hotel. The idea with the bee hotel is that a female bee will move into one of the tunnels and pack it with mud and nectar. Then she will lay an egg and then seal off the tunnel. So then what will happen is the egg will hatch, the larvae will eat the pollen and the nectar, and then it will pupate over the fall. And then over the winter, it will become an adult and will emerge the following season. You can make bee houses and bee hotels out of blocks of wood, and you could easily just drill holes into wood, but don't use pressure treated wood because it has chemicals in it that could be harmful for bees. I'm sure you've noticed maybe in sheds or things that some carpenter bees will drill an almost perfect hole into your shed. That's what they're looking to do. They're looking to make a tunnel to make a house in. All bees provide an important service by pollinating plants. So they are pollinating our vegetables and all of our plants to help our ecosystems grow. So they are very, very important and providing them a safe shelter is one way that we can help their populations. Now don't mistake in bees and wasps. I think that happens a lot because bees are definitely our little helper friends that are pollinating and then wasps, people kind of get upset with wasps. They're everywhere. They're in the garbage. They're at your picnic. Wasps, however a nuisance they are, are also very important. They don't pollinate, but they do help protect the flowers from all the other insects that may try to harm that flower. So really, all insects do serve some purpose in our ecosystem. We have a few books here all about bees and how you can design a garden specifically for your bee friends. You can find these in our catalog as well. So there is so much we can talk about when it comes to bees, but we must move on. So let's talk about butterflies. On to our last important pollinator that we're going to talk about today, all about butterflies. So Shannon, have you ever been to the Butterfly Conservatory? Yes, I have. Have you ever noticed at the Butterfly Conservatory how there's like bowls of liquid with rocks and... Yeah, they stuff? have random plates all over the place there. Yeah. So that's a butterfly feeder and we're going to make one. So like hummingbirds, like we talked about earlier, butterflies also eat nectar, and that's what the plates of liquid are. They're like sugar water. But unique to butterflies, they are actually eating with their feet. So they need somewhere to land so they can dip their feet into that nectar and actually eat. So we're going to make a feeder. So this is a extremely simple thing to make. All you need is a couple plates, some rocks, your sugar water, and just some things to make it really, really colorful because butterflies are, they're very attracted to bright colors. So your bigger plate is the bottom 
And then the more colorful the plate, the better. So we're going to put our colorful plate in the middle. And the rocks and the marbles are what the butterflies are actually going to land on. So when you see it at the conservatory, it looks like a plate of rocks. That's what it is. But it's so they can have somewhere to land and dip their feet in. have our plate full of colorful marble stones <laughs> and then you all you have to do is pour in your sugar water so that's that same mixture that we talked about earlier um, one part sugar to four parts water you pour it into that second plate the bigger outer plate is just to catch any runoff or deter other animals from getting into it and that's basically it they say that you can add some flowers or other um, bright colors around the tray just to help attract more butterflies. You've probably noticed if you have flowers in your garden or you have a potted flower or maybe on your balcony, that it will attract butterflies. So like Leslie said, they're looking for that bright color and they also help to pollinate flowers and move pollen back and forth just like our bees. So you can set your butterfly feeder off of the ground, so maybe on an overturned flower pot, or you could tie it up with some string and hang it so like cats or anything on the ground can't really get to it and dump it over. So like we said earlier in the segment that you need to provide a lot of different sources of food for your pollinators, butterflies also love fruit. So like slices of bananas or berries, they love the sweetness of things. So you could put some fruit slices on top of that as well to attract them. Having a liquid source like this also will just help your bees and help your other insects as well. So one of our most recognizable butterflies would be the monarch butterfly. And we need to appreciate those butterflies because they fly approximately 5,000 kilometers and migrate down to Mexico every single year. And butterflies have a very extremely short lifespan. They only live about one season. So attracting them to your yard and helping them pollinate your plants is super useful and very important in that season. So if you're gardening for the purpose of butterflies, then here are a couple of books that you'll find in our catalog. There are more, definitely, like I mentioned. So like one of the books that I mentioned earlier has in the back a butterfly field guide as well as that, the flower field guide. As mentioned in all three of our segments here, birds, bees, and butterflies, adding a water and a food source helps all of our native pollinators. Thank you so much for joining us for these quick tips and tricks on how to help your backyard pollinators. You can find all these books and many more on our website, www.ocl.net. So you can go on there and place a hold on these titles or many more. And stay connected with the Oxford County Libraries online. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find all of our past Try This videos on our YouTube channel, as well as so much more programming content. So until next time, we'll see you on another edition of Try This. Thanks, bye.